Well, I've always loved art. Back when I was, uh, you know, before I could read or write, my mom taught me, my mom and dad both, they wrote a little ABC book. With, uh, and they drew pictures of A is for apple, B is for ball, and I colored the pictures. And I, drawing has been my life ever since I could hold a pencil or a crayon. And I spent most of my childhood copying Disney cartoons and that's a huge influence is Disney and his style and probably that I look like I know what I'm doing but it's a beginning process every time I start something new I have to learn all over again make mistakes all over again and bluff it Well, besides Disney, who is in a major inspiration for me my whole life, I still use Disney characters in my paintings and sculptures to make statements about things I believe in the world and my spiritual life and social commentary and things like that. Um, but when I went to school, I went to UC Davis. And I was there in the early 60s. And Wayne Thiebaud and Robert Anderson, uh, two of the major art figures in this area today, were my teachers. And they were just breaking out in their art. And Thiebaud's style, the humor, uh, the everyday objects, um, pop art and funk art, uh, still major influences in the art today. Uh, one thing that... Uh, was always separate in the, those back days in the 60s was illustration and fine art were totally separate. And caricature and illustration, they used photographs and it just was a big wall between them. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to combine them because uh, drawing caricatures at parties has been my profession since I graduated from college. I got a job at Disneyland and drew portraits at um, Tomorrowland for the summer of 65 and I got into the public you know, eye where I wasn't self-conscious about drawing people with people looking, watching me draw. So I've been doing that for the last 50 years. So I wanted to combine um, the caricature illustration with fine art and that's what these sculptures are. These are like a, mm -hmm. this is like a caricature of Audrey Hepburn, uh, trying to be funny. The cake on her head is a nod to Peter Vandenberg, who was a grad student back in Davis when I was going to school there. And it, just the humor. I wanted to be humorous and beautiful. Um, this particular sculpture, she has a chocolate cake on her head because I found a quote of hers which is stamped on the back of the, caricature, or the sculpture that says, let's face it, everybody needs a gooey piece of chocolate cake every once in a while. I, at least I know I do. Probably to learn as many different uh, ways to make art as possible. You know, do sculpture, do clay, do painting, mm -hmm. do printmaking, do photography. Um, go dance, go sing songs, you know, learn the guitar, you know, all of it. All the arts are amazing and it's what we need to express ourselves. It's our God-given gift to express ourselves with art. That's therapy. Take, it, take all the different kinds of things that you can and uh, then put them together. It, get inspired by other artists. All mm -hmm. art comes from other art. Mm -hmm. So get inspired by um, all the artists that you like and put it all together in your own style. Yeah. After you discipline yourself to do it right, you know, learn mm -hmm. how, learn perspective, learn how to, the structure of the face, know where the bones are, yeah. that the eyes are in the middle of the head, not way up here on your forehead. So many portraits you know, have no brains. Clay right now, um, because it's primal, it's like the earth and it's like you're creating like God created out of clay I mean it's like it's amazing 
It just comes right out of your soul and your spirit. Uh, painting takes um, more planning. Art, mm -hmm. I mean, clay, you can just kind of do it, mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. Painting, too, sometimes, but... I think it's necessary more than ever, but I'm not quite sure what it has to do with the economy, because... People are so, I mean, they're losing their jobs, they're losing their stores, they're losing their businesses. How can you afford to buy art? Mm -hmm. you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, but for me, like this series of caricature art I'm doing, I've got about 10 different sculptures right now that I'm hoping will be good enough for collectors and people who have money will buy them. So that's why I'm pressing in to do my best mm -hmm. you know, so that I can get the price that I feel it's worth. One thing that has been wonderful for me during this lockdown is to stay home mm -hmm. and not feel obligated to go do all these things, do, do, do all these things that I do all the time. And um, I have a garden for the first time in 30 years, and I've had I've done two or three sculptures, and um, you you have to dig into your creativity when you can't go do anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are going to find their um, true self, you know, by this unpositive, positive, you know, part of our society right now. Blue Line has been, I've been with the Roseville Art Center and Blue Line Arts since 1986. So I've been here for a long, long time. And they have supported me from the get-go. I taught classes here. Um, my my uh, most successful class I ever taught was cartooning to kids. And I did that for years and years here at, uh, through Roseville Arts. Um, but just that they support the community, the artist community. I mean, this show right now is just amazing. Last year's show was amazing. I'm amazed at how awesome the artists are in this area. And um, that is for the public, you know, to educate the public, the classes, for the kids. It's all fantastic. You know, it's, it's not just a gallery that focuses on a certain few. It's open to anybody who can, wants to join, which I think is awesome.